Hello, hello everybody, how are we doing today? I hope you guys are all doing awesome. I missed all of you this week, but I was glad I got to spend time with my mom on Thursday and Friday. Um, I really am grateful for you guys understanding and you guys and your ongoing support after my news um, article on TV or my news interview, which I was super nervous, excited about, um, and am still nervous and excited about. Hello, Jody and Sandy. Um, <clears throat> I hope you guys are all doing awesome. We are going to be making a couple different recipes of pinwheels today. Um, pinwheels are fun ways um, to do finger foods at Super Bowl parties or get-togethers. Hello, Jaden and Matt. How are you? I hope you guys are all doing awesome. Hello, Taylor and Jill. Hello, Deb. Um, so like I said, pinwheels are fun to do for big group gatherings. Hello, Jennifer and Rose. And there's so, so many different variations of pinwheels. So these are just a few of the, like there's probably a hundred different pinwheel recipes, different variations, and different ways that you can make it your own. Hello, Jody and Twyla, Danielle. Hello, Kathy and Thelma, Janet. Janet and Jennifer, thank you, Chantel, Patrick, Robert. I hope you guys are doing awesome, you guys. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, there's a bunch of different ways that you can personalize these pinwheel recipes. So if there's something in it and you are just really not a fan, you can always remove that ingredient or you can replace it with another one. So don't ever get discouraged when you pick a pinwheel recipe that has something in it that you just really don't want. Hello, Eileen and Tracy. Hello, Ashley, Thelma, how are you? Um, I am gonna go out of my comfort zone today and I don't normally like blue cheese, but we are gonna follow along with this buffalo chicken pinwheel recipe that has blue cheese crumbles in it. My friend Macy made them today for my brother for him to go to work with. She said she doesn't like blue cheese, but that she really enjoyed the buffalo mixture that she made for it. So. I'm excited. Hello, Sheila and Azuzina. Thank you, Thelma. Um, it actually came out of my mom's closet. I helped her go through her closet while I was here. She got donated probably over 300 shirts from her closet, and about six of them made their way into my suitcase instead of the donate bag. I am enjoying my vacation, you guys. Hello, Lacey. Hello, Eileen from New York and Debra. You guys, it is like 72 degrees out today. Um, the family and I went for a long walk walk today which was nice we went to kind of like a trampoline park yesterday um, so lots of nice weather here we'll be sad to go home on Wednesday because I hear it's really really cold in North Dakota hello Macy and Kehlani hello Patrick and Sheila I am NOT a fan of blue cheese but I'm gonna give it a try today like I said I am going to add it in like it says in the recipe because Macy said it's really not bad, so I am nervous about it. But like I said, if I don't like it, it just stops me from eating one of the three pinwheel recipes because I'm sure there's going to be enough food to last a lifetime with these three pinwheel recipes. Yes, a huge change from North Dakota. Hello, Kayla. Half the amount of blue cheese crumbles. I might do that. I'm not using any green onions either because mom doesn't like those. Um, thank you, Susan. Hello, Sherry and Tiara. How are you? Hello, Sasha and Roxy. Thank you, you guys. Um, I feel like I always like kill my outfit game and stuff when I'm here in Arizona and then I get back home and all I want to do is wear sweatpants and sweatshirts. So I try to live it up while I'm in Arizona. Hello, Sue. Yeah, it's going to be huge weather shock, you guys. I know it's freezing in North Dakota, negative 51 in Minot, and we live in Deluxe, which is up out of the valley of Minot, so it actually gets a lot colder and windier where we live but it, I'm not looking forward to it um, Eileen I think a majority of these pinwheels will get eaten tonight um, but if we have any leftovers I'm sure we will eat them tomorrow unfortunately my mom does work so we don't have any big plans for tomorrow's Super Bowl but we'll see how it goes Macy didn't use those either good so I know um, I didn't choose the freezing weather. Unfortunately, that's just part of North Dakota. I really do love everything else about North Dakota. It's supposed to get snow in Tennessee, negative 18 in Devil's Lake. Sherry, thank you for sharing. Okay, if you guys are new here, welcome. Um, if you saw me on the news, welcome, you guys. I am Riley. I'm Mom Feeling Hungry Boys. I've been doing this over a year now. Um, I do a giveaway at the end of every show. 
So if you would just now tuned in and you don't know how it works, you click down at the bottom of the screen. There's a thumbs up, there's a heart, there's a smiley face, there's a caring emoji, there's a crying face, there's a mad face. There's all those down at the bottom of the screen. Pick one of them and click it. It doesn't matter how many times you click it or which one you click, it will enter your name into the giveaway at the end of the show. You do have to be present to win. So if you want to win, you do need to hang out through the length of the show to get entered into the giveaway and receive your prize. Um, to be present to win, you do have to answer it with within two minutes of your name being called as a giveaway winner for you to claim it. Um, we do giveaways 40, 80, and 120 live views. We have made it above 120 before, so if we go up in 40 increments from there, that's a giveaway for every 40 that we hit. I grew up in Las Vegas, actually, so um, I love the sunshine, I love the desert, but for whatever reason, life took me to North Dakota, and that's where I'm at right now. Hello, Lisa, Amber, and Faye. We are gonna get started. I decided to start with the taco pinwheels. I am going to make two batches of this recipe. One we will throw in the oven right away. The other ones we will cut and we will put in um, a little bit closer to when my mom's coming home so that they can be fresh piping hot for her. Hello, Tracy and Kim. So we are gonna get started. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees. So preheat your oven to 400 if you're gonna make the taco ones with me. At my mom's grocery store, they did not have the pizza, Pillsbury pizza crust. Um, they only had the little dough sheets, which I'm not um, not mad about because I love crescent rolls. So we're gonna try these and see how they go. They're gonna probably be light and flaky compared to the pizza crust that Pillsbury makes. So. 400 degrees you want to get out a baking sheet um, if you are using a pampered chef baking sheet just make sure that you don't spray it with aerosol spray like the recipe calls for make sure you use your kitchen spritzer or that you take a paper towel with some oil on it and you rub it around the baking sheet the aerosol spray will cause a sticky residue to build up on your non-stick cookie sheet and you don't want that to happen so today I'm gonna to unroll this and I am using parchment paper so that I'm not gonna have to try and wrestle this off of the wood cookie sheet or um, cutting board that I have under here. So if you want to use parchment paper, um, if you wanna spray a little cooking spray down on whatever cutting board you're using or if you're using your counter, um, put some nonstick spray down so that this will be easy to roll up and slice up. Um, Rose, I believe so. I will double check at the end of the show. So we have our oven preheated to 400. I cooked up my ground beef already, and that's what's great about pinwheels. A lot of pinwheel recipes can be made ahead of time. Um, a lot of the ingredients you can prep beforehand, so you can just make these really, really quick when you have guests coming over or anything like that. So I cooked up some ground turkey instead of ground beef, and I sprinkled my taco seasoning packet in it. So you can do this and do it the night before and throw it in your fridge and pull it out when you're ready to make your taco um, pinwheels. If you want to cook it up while you're doing it, just cook it up until it's no longer pink. Drain off the fat. Add two tablespoons of taco seasoning and mix around. Hello, Eileen and Angie. Somebody's saying my zipper is down, but it's not. Sorry, guys. Um, so you're going to cook it up. Take the pizza dough out of your packet. If you don't have pizza dough, feel free to do what I did and do the Pillsbury dough sheet, crescent dough sheet. You're gonna stretch it out into a rectangle. You don't need to flatten it out too much, but just give yourself a little bit of a stretch so that you have a little bit more room to work with when it comes to making this pinwheel. Right, stay where it's warm a few more days. Hello, Gina and Heather, how are you? All right, so we are gonna take this and you are gonna add your taco meat. I'm using my hands nice and washed up first and take this and sprinkle your taco meat. You want half a pound per sheet of pizza dough or your crescent roll dough sheets. So I did cook up a pound because I'm gonna be making two of these for when my mom comes home. You can use ground beef or ground turkey. We like ground turkey in the house. Um, it's just a little, easier to digest than some of the red beef, red meats. Um, I do get the more lean, I think this is 93% lean tur tur ground turkey meat. Um, you can go for less lean if you want. You're feeding a big family of um, hungry boys, you can go less lean if that's what you would prefer. 
Like I said, the taco seasoning is already on the ground turkey, so you don't need to add any more onto there. And then you are going to take your cheese. I know I'm gonna have to block him out of here if he's gonna keep at it. Unfortunately, this is what happens and when you get a bigger crowd going on. So here we go. Ta-da, problem solved. Hello, hello everybody. If you guys see any more trolls like that, let me know. I haven't had a troll in a long, long time on my show. I had them when I first started. They used to ask me weird things about my couch, but thankfully um, we can just remove them from the group and we don't have to listen to them anymore. So. Keep an eye out for them. Just let me know when they appear and I can get rid of the trolls from my feet. So <clears throat> we have about half a pound of ground taco meat on here. Then we are gonna take about a cup of shredded cheese. You guys know me, measuring out cheese is always just a rough guess of how much you want. Use um, whatever cheese you want. Like I said, if, they're, if you don't like Mexican blend cheese, use pepper jack, use cheddar, use whatever you want. You can definitely make these pinwheels however you prefer. You don't need to stick straight to the recipe. Um, you can even cook up some chicken and put some taco seasoning on it if you want chicken pinwheels. Um, you can use whatever you prefer when it comes to your protein style and your cheese and stuff like that. So don't let it um, bother you if there is someone that or something in it or someone that doesn't like certain things just find out and then um, you can just kind of fix it from there yep somebody in the wrong place so starting on the long edge of our dough piece I'm going to use my parchment sheet to kind of start rolling this so that's all you guys need in here you guys just taco meat and cheese Super simple, and then what you can do is make kind of a taco bar out of it, and you can get sour cream, guacamole, tomatoes, onions, and then what the people can do when they come to your house is they can grab these little taco pinwheels, and then they can add their toppings to the top of the pinwheel and kind of make it their own, which is really nice when you have a group of adults and a group of kids coming over, because kids can be a lot pickier when it comes to this type of stuff. So by putting just meat and cheese in here, you are kind of opening this up for the kiddos to really enjoy it without one kid being like, ew, I hate onions or I don't like tomatoes. Um, I was definitely one of those kids when I was younger. So um, I would have loved if uh, Super Bowl parties had food for me that I didn't have to uh, pick a million things out of when I was a kid. But we learn to adapt. So we just roll it. I really like using this parchment paper. It makes it a lot easier to roll it. Yes, Thelma, I do. My kids have been asking for rainbow grilled cheese on this trip and I have not made it for them. They're so fun to do. Um, I will be starting my kids cooking glasses in March at one of the um, local rural middle schools. So I'm excited to get back and do some more fun recipes with the kiddos locally. So there we go, we've got this all rolled up the best we can. One side is a little bit neater than the other. Hello, hello. These are so fun, you guys. These are a little um, different than normal pinwheels. Um, a lot of pinwheel recipes um, are cold pinwheels and these are actually warm oven baked pinwheels, which are delicious. So we've got this all rolled up. That parchment paper worked out beautifully. I did have another piece under this piece to kind of roll it out. So we'll take this and we will cut the best we can with a serrated knife. You want about one inch pieces depending on um, what kind of dough you're using is um, how many slices you'll get out of it. I feel like the Pillsbury pizza dough um, isn't as big as the crescent roll sheet, but I'm gonna try my best. Very light pressure with the serrated knife um, in a sawing motion. You don't need to add too much pressure. Let those teeth do the work for you. If you push too hard down on this, you're just gonna get one big flattened piece of dough and it's gonna be really hard for you to put it onto your cookie sheet. Also, I do recommend um, trying to keep your dough in your fridge 
as long as possible while you prep your ingredients because the more room temperature this dough gets, as you can see, the harder it is to work with. So you wanna keep that nice and cool so that you're not struggling with it like I am. My mom's uh, condo is kind of warm today because it's so nice out and we don't have the air conditioning on. So I'm kind of fighting against the clock here. Yes, all the way through Tabitha because then we're gonna take these pieces and we are going to set them on our cookie sheet and we are going to bake them. So you're just gonna keep try and keep them as rolled up as possible and they're gonna be little taco pinwheels here on my cookie sheet. Oop, one of the rolls I didn't cut through all the way. Here we go. I'm kind of like pinching them together and adding almost another roll to it so that they don't fall apart too bad on me. They'll be a lot easier to handle as they bake up. This dough will be a lot easier as I get over this other side, I know they're gonna get harder and harder for me to place on this cookie sheet. So keep that in mind, you guys. You wanna keep this dough as cool as possible. So working in a cooler kitchen, or if you have a cooler spot in your kitchen away from your oven or your stove so that you're not fighting against the clock like I am with how warm these are. It's probably 76 or 78 degrees in the house right now. So I am doing the best I can they have gotten warm but they're gonna be delicious and they're still gonna look really good all rolled up on your cookie sheet so here we go and then once I pop these in the oven we are gonna work on our other pinwheels we have for today one of them being buffalo chicken and the other one being like a cheesy ranch turkey pinwheel so We've got those on our cookie sheet. It's a very nonstick pan already, so if you do have the Pamper Chef nonstick baking sheets, you don't necessarily need to spray them because they are really, really good already. So just keep that in mind. So here are our little taco pinwheels before we put them in. 400 degrees in your oven, and we're gonna do it for about 10 to 12 minutes. Here we go. Setting my timer for 10 minutes. You can always check on it um, when it gets a little bit closer to see if you need to add more time. So I will make another round of those when it gets closer to my mom getting off of work. We'll move that over and we will move on to the next recipe. Yes, tacos are amazing in any way, shape, or form. I, like I said, top it with sour cream, guacamole, salsa, onions, pico, you name it. Any taco fixing that you absolutely love, you can definitely just add it to a taco bar where everyone can serve themselves, grab a little pinwheel, dab it on top, and make the most delicious taco for themselves. Um, there is a pizza stone that just kind of permanently sits in my mom's oven. I always forget to take it out, but since it's 400 degrees, I don't want it to sit on her glass stove top. So I just leave it in there and stick stuff on top of it, and it seems to be working out for me. So yes, there is a pizza stone in my mom's oven, and I always forget that it's there until it's too late. <sighs> hey, Joey, how are you? Jeremy, yes, jalapenos green peppers, you name it. Anything that you love on your taco, you can definitely just add it to a little taco bar when everyone comes over to hang out. So we've got our taco pinwheels done. We will jump over to the cracked out turkey pinwheels. You need cream cheese, thinly sliced turkey, shredded cheese, ranch seasoning, and then these pinwheels are gonna be done with tortillas. You want the large burrito kind of tortillas. You want them to be at least 10 inches, 12 being the best. The more, the bigger, the better, so that it's easier and you can make more pinwheels out of it. I know Marissa, pinwheels are so good, and there's so many different variations, and that's what I really, really love about it. Yeah, she works a lot. She's awesome. Um, her weekends are Thursday and Friday for her. She wakes up, she goes to work about 9, and she gets home at about 5.36. So we hang out with her in the evenings and get as much time with her as we can. So we are going to grab a bowl and then mix up our softened cream cheese in with our ranch seasoning. 
want your egg beaters or electric mixer for this recipe. It's easier to get your ranch incorporated in with your cream cheese. <laughs> I know, I feel like I've noticed a lot of people keep their stones in their ovens because they don't have anywhere else to put them. This egg beater does not want to go in straight. There we go. All right, I have way too many things plugged in right now. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna add our softened cream cheese in with our ranch powder. So you don't want to make the ranch dressing. So you are using the Hidden Valley Ranch Packet. Don't make it, don't add the milk, don't add the mayonnaise. We just want the powder for this because we are gonna mix it into this cream cheese, making our own spread for this pinwheel, which is what gives it its name as the cracked out pinwheel because you are adding ranch seasoning and cream cheese, which is so good. So we're gonna add this in a packet of the ranch mix here. And we want some cheddar cheese. I actually picked pepper jack. Um, I figured that pepper jack would add a nice flavor to our cracked out pinwheels. So we're gonna do a cup of pepper jack cheese mixed in here too like so throw a bunch on the floor you guys i never realize how messy i am when i cook until i'm over here and my mom doesn't have dogs like i do and i look on the floor and there's always food around my feet i need to get better at that because i just toss so much cheese onto the floor and if my dogs were here i would never notice all right we want one to two tablespoons of milk I'm gonna do a tablespoon at first, and if we need a little bit more, we can add more in. So you want your cream cheese softened, just leave it on the counter. Um, if you wanna make these during the day, just set it out right when you wake up. And it'll be nice and softened by the time you need it. All right, I am gonna add a little bit more milk, so just two tablespoons at the most of milk. And so you don't want it too thick because we are gonna have to try and spread this on the tortilla without ripping it into pieces. So um, we have this all ready and mixed up. Now we are gonna get some bacon ready. Here we are. So this was actually already pre-cooked bacon and then I just heated it up in a skillet. So it's super easy to have this stuff ready. You can get the pre-cooked bacon at the grocery store and then just cut it up into pieces. Um, it is a little bit easier to cut up your bacon and then fry it. So if you wanna do that, that's a little bit easier and you have less work of trying to chop up already greasy bacon here. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Joey and I actually are friends from when I used to live in Vegas when I was younger. He is just giving me a hard time as always. We grew up when I was in high school in Vegas and you guys are cracking me up about it. Yes, you guys, res rescue dogs to clean up, just even to clean up after you in the kitchen. Um, my dogs get fed probably the best food out of any dogs ever because I <laughs> drop stuff on the floor all the time when my kids are eating crab and they fling food onto the ground and my dogs always are so excited about it. They eat so well. All right. So I'm just chopping this up. You guys know I love these scissors. These are my Pampered Chef um, salad lettuce scissors. You guys, they're awesome. I use it for shredding chicken, for cutting bacon. Um, it makes your job so much easier. It doubles the amount of work that you can do. So you want three-fourths of a cup of cooked bacon. I'm just kind of eyeballing it there. If you don't like bacon, you definitely don't have to use it. Like I said, Macy made some today, and instead of using bacon and turkey, she just used ham and left the turkey out. Kayla, this, these are awesome. These are the Pampered Chef um, 
salad scissors. I always say salad, but I think they're lettuce. I don't know. Something like that. And they are awesome. I actually use them for everything but... Hold on. My phone's going to die. Everything but salad. <laughs> I use it for chicken. I use it for bacon. They are the best scissors ever. So we've got our bacon in here. Like I said, add more milk if you need to. If you feel like this is going to be really hard to spread onto your tortilla, make it easier for yourself. Add in a little bit of milk, just a little at a time, you guys. After the two tablespoons, only add it in about a teaspoon at a time until it gets to a consistency that you are comfortable with spreading onto your tortilla. So we are going to spread the mixture onto four tortilla shells. Yes, Gina, they're the best. They are the best. Chopping up chicken, chopping up bacon. Anytime you really need to get in there and dice something up, grab those scissors. So we are going to spread a fourth of the mixture onto the tortilla. Like I said, use four large, the burrito tortilla shells. Spread it on. If you have your Pampered Chef spreaders, take them out and use them. They are amazing for stuff like this. I don't have any at my mom's house, so we're just gonna use a spatula. I use the back of a rubber spatula. Um, it's a lot more forgiving than using a knife of any kind. So spread that on there. Then you are going to lay three to four of the thinly sliced turkey deli meat. If you want to go to your deli counter and have them slice it up for you, you can. I like this. This package stuff um, works really well for me. And besides the fact that I hate trying to get this ding thing open, there we go. So. Thinly sliced is the best, you guys, because the thicker this is, the harder it will be for you to roll it. So that's something to keep in mind. If you are going to the deli counter, you want to make sure that they aren't too thick because then um, it will cause the rolling process to be a pain in the butt for you. Yes, the boys are building forts in the back room with dad right now. So... That is our timer for our taco pinwheels. So we are gonna take a peek and see if they need about two more minutes. I would say yes. You want them to be kind of golden brown. You don't want them to be doughy. So keep an eye on them. So we have that on there. And then you are going to gently roll them the best you can in to a little wheel shape. What you wanna be careful is that you're not pushing your ingredients as you roll it, because if you start to push your ingredients, pretty soon you're gonna have an entire slice of turkey off the end of your tortilla shell and not actually in your, your pinned pinwheel, like this. Now, if you're eating right away, go for it. Slice it up and eat them. If you're having guests over, roll it up in some saran wrap and stick it in the fridge to chill. Chilling them will give you the best result as far as slicing them goes. So if you have a hard time slicing up your pinwheels, let them hang out in the fridge a little bit before you slice them up. The best thing to do for difficult pinwheels. Another thing, if any of you have learned it, keeping your saran wrap in the freezer actually makes it easier to handle. So we have our turkey pinwheel. We're gonna pop this into the fridge so that it can chill. And we're gonna move on to our next pinwheel. I'll be able to finish the rest of these once we sign off and we've done our giveaways. Um, my friend Brie, you guys know Brie that's always um, hanging out, helping me when I'm doing my shows. She is taking care of our fur babies. She takes my dogs over to her house and then she just checks on my cats every couple of days, gives them food, changes their litter boxes and water. They're pretty low well maintenance and that's what I love about cats. All right, you guys, so that was 
our turkey pinwheel, our cracked out turkey pinwheel, our taco pinwheels are done coming out of the oven. These are all super easy and fast. All you needed was 12 minutes for the taco pinwheels. They look so good. Golden brown. Just let them sit there and cool. It says serve immediately. So if you are making the taco ones for guests, just make sure that you have them ready and just pop them in the oven every time you need to refresh the table. I know, Corrine, it's only 71 degrees here. Tank tops, but I do still have jeans on. <laughs> Yes, Brie is MVP of taking care of all the kids. Yes, saran wrap in the freezer, you guys. You won't regret it. All right, so we've got our cracked out pinwheels done. Now we are going to do our buffalo chicken pinwheels. Start off, make it easy on yourself. If you're doing this for a crowd of people and you're already making all these pinwheels or anything else, just go to your grocery store and get a rotisserie chicken. That is all you need to do. Don't stress about needing to cook the chicken to make your chicken pinwheels. Just go and get a rotisserie chicken and take the breast meat, take the thigh meat, whatever you want, and chop it up for this recipe. I love pinwheels. Might have to make them tomorrow when we have friends over. You are so welcome. So like I said, I just use these scissors when I need to shred up chicken or bacon. Just go in here. I just took the two breasts out of the rotisserie chicken. I saved the other meat for my mom to make sandwiches for lunch. Just chop it up. You want about a pound of chicken for this recipe. Just keep your eyes. If you're using the rotisserie, just make sure you get all the big chunks of fat out and that you don't have any bones or cartilage. If you don't want to use a rotisserie chicken, just stick some chicken breast in your pressure cooker and cook them up and shred them up. Um, if you don't like buffalo sauce, you can use cayenne pepper sauce. So if buffalo sauce is not your jam, you can definitely switch it out for some cayenne pepper sauce and you won't regret it. So these are very versatile too. If you don't like buffalo, if you don't like cayenne, you can do barbecue, anything like that. Yes, you guys, these scissors are awesome. So much easier than using two forks. And what I like about it is then it's not shredded. I'm not a huge fan of stringy pieces of chicken where if you use the scissors, they are more cubed and I like that effect a little bit better. Yes, your pamper chef, you can make your own rotisserie chicken in it. But like I said, if you're just trying to save on time, just do it with the rotisserie chicken from the store. Yes, you guys need these scissors. I'm telling you, they are the best. All right, so in a bowl, we're gonna beat some cream cheese and sauce, blue cheese, Colby Jack cheese, and green onions. If you're gonna use the green onions, like I said, I am not. Here we go. Grab our ingredients for our buffalo chicken pinwheels. I already have a package of tortilla shells out. I'm making a mess, guys. If you saw the other side of this kitchen, you would laugh. Thelma, I didn't. Will you comment one more time? Usually Brie is my little secretary when I am cooking, so I didn't see it, Thelma. All right. Well, this cheese doesn't want to open for me. There we go. All right, so we're gonna beat the cream cheese again, softened cream cheese, leave it out on your counter, um, let it come to room temperature. If you're in a hurry, you forgot to take the cream cheese out of the fridge, um, just make sure, my friend has made this mistake before, make sure if you need to soften your cream cheese, take it out of this package. This will start a fire in your microwave if you try to use it to soften it inside of the package. So stick it. Yes, you got it, Thelma. I will get you some scissors on the way. Um, so if you need to soften it, um, yeah, please just make sure that you don't put it in this package because it will kill your microwave and the cream cheese. All right. So we've got our cream cheese in here. We want half a cup of hot wing sauce, buffalo sauce, cayenne pepper sauce, any of those. What, Kareen? Guess what she says. So we want half a cup of buffalo sauce, cayenne pepper sauce, whatever you prefer. 
Here we go. And then we want to add in our blue cheese, blue cheese crumbles. So not the blue cheese dressing, blue cheese crumbles. So we're not using the dressing. You got a brand new inbox sealed kitchen, a professional five plus for 200 bucks cream. That is a score. All right, so about a fourth of a cup of blue cheese crumbles. It can be found where your Parmesan cheese, Romano cheese, your specialty cheeses are in your grocery store. So any of those aged cheeses or anything, that's where you will find your blue cheese crumbles. Yes, Deb, awesome. Jason, I know, but some people don't know that because my friend definitely told me she about died putting it in her microwave. So I'm just letting everyone know. Yes, it is real aluminum foil wrapped around your cream cheese. No, it cannot go in your microwave. So mix this up. You want about a cup of Colby Jack cheese. You can use pepper jack, you can use cheddar cheese, you can use whatever you want, whatever shredded cheese you have sitting at home. Just throw it in there. So good. What I like about this, you guys, is this: these um, egg beaters did break up those blue cheese crumbles. So they're not big chunks anymore. They're all blended in and making this nice and creamy instead of big chunks of cheese that scare me. So. Add your chicken in. For this, you do wanna just mix it by hand and not use your electric mixer. So I am just gonna grab another rubber spatula. That's not the one I want. Here we go. And just kind of fold it in there. Get your chicken all mixed in. All right, here we go. And this is the same thing. So once you add this in, you want to make sure as you roll it up that you are not pushing it to the edge of the tortilla shell so that you are losing your mixture out of the middle of your um, pinwheel. Yes, you guys. So now this is like a buffalo chicken dip. And we are just going to add it to our tortillas Roll it up, put it in the fridge, and wait to cut it until it's nice and chilled. <laughs> Limburger is the type of stinky cheese. <laughs> it's okay, Eileen. We did. We added the, the chicken in. We just barely um, mixed it in to your dip. Don't use your egg beaters to mix it in there because it will destroy your chicken. And we don't want that. So we're going to use about five large tortilla shells here give or take you guys if you only make four that's fine if you end up with six that's fine don't be hard on yourself when you're making pinwheels um the more you make them the better you will be able to gauge how much mixture to add in to the tortilla you'll learn what's too much, what's not enough. We teach pinwheels to kids at the cooking classes that I do, and um, it's kind of funny to see what they come up with and how they're able to roll it based on how much they put into their pinwheel. So like I said, just barely, not too much pressure. You don't wanna be pushing this mixture out of the tortilla itself because that's no fun. We want nice yummy dip on the inside. I'm gonna just spread this over. It's a little thick on one side. And if you want, you can just cut off the ends and eat them as you cook, or you can cut off the ends and get rid of them. But usually these end pieces don't have that much in them. I cut them off and eat them myself. But whatever you guys prefer, you can serve them too if you want to. If you got a bunch of people and you know they won't care about end pieces of your pinwheel, do what you wanna do. So just take them, again, keep your saran wrap in the freezer, roll this guy up and put him in the fridge to chill so that slicing him will be a lot easier. Another awesome thing, make a bunch of these, only pull out one roll at a time, set them out, slice them up, 
And then the next time you need to refresh it, pull it out of the fridge, slice it up so that they're nice and cold every time you serve them. Always a helpful tip to just leave them chilling in the fridge until you are ready for them. So those are our three pinwheels today, you guys. Super easy, especially if you do the rotisserie chicken. You have the deli turkey already sliced up for you. You make your ground beef the night before for your taco things. Just throw it all together. You can have your kids help you. If your kids are good in the kitchen, have them spread this and roll them up for you, and you won't even have to stress about food for when everyone comes over for the game. Always make pinwheels with pickles. There's pinwheels with pickles. There's pinwheels with um, black olives and cheese. It's totally up to you. You can add whatever you want to pinwheels and they will be delicious. So I am gonna grab my computer here. I'm gonna pull off the names and then I'm gonna finish all of these pinwheels up Yes, I'll be in North Dakota by Wednesday night. Nope, so the turkey and the buffalo chicken ones, you want in the refrigerator, sliced up cold. Taco are the only ones that go in the oven. Most pinwheels are served refrigerator cold. They're not warm. So the taco pinwheels are the only different ones that you want to put in the oven. So. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I wanted to do a couple of recipes for Super Bowl since they mentioned it on the news channel the other day about Super Bowl and my cooking show together. So I did want to do you guys a little favor and give you some yummy snacks you can pick at for bringing stuff to work because you have to work Super Bowl or when you want to come over to somebody's house and you hate coming empty handed. I know Jeremy, I don't want to come back just yet. It sounds super, super cold, but I have to. Yes, you guys, they all look and smell delicious. I'm excited for the taco ones. <laughs> Jason, I would think so. I think sushi would be considered a pinwheel. Nope, so the tortilla shells, you don't need to cook them up or anything like that. Um, make sure that you like and follow the page if you guys want to be entered into the giveaway. I always send out invites at the end of my show so that if you don't like or follow the page, you know it because it will give you a little notification saying Mom Feeling Hungry Boys has invited you to follow or like the page. So make sure that you take that time to do that. It just supports me and my business. It shows Facebook that I am successful and then they give me more fun things to do with you guys um, like hosting events and stuff like that. So. We are just getting ready to pull the names off. There's over 150 names here, which is so awesome. That means we're doing three giveaways today. If you're not familiar with my giveaway process, um, you do have to be present to win. If you've already won for the month of January, you cannot win again. Um, please be honest because we do keep track of it. So if you have won already and, um, actually it's February now, where's my brain? Um, just be honest because if you have already won for that month, we will know because we keep it all written down so that we don't have repeats. Um, Amanda, if you click on my face right now, the description of this video will pop up. At the very, very, very bottom of the description, past all the recipes, you will see my Pampered Chef link there. Just click it and start shopping and they will um, come to me so that if you need any help or any assistance, I can help you um, with that. So if you need anything Pampered Chef, you can also find my shopping link on my website. On any of the recipes, there should be a Pampered Chef button that you can click and you can shop from there. Um, if you have a big wish list with Pampered Chef, always hosting a party with me will give you way more than just paying cold hard cash for your items. So if you have a big wish list and you want to snag a bunch of stuff for free or discounted, always message me and we can set you up with a party. I handle all the work for you. I do all the heavy lifting. Your only job is to um, your only job is to invite your friends and family to the event on Facebook, and I do the rest. All right, you guys. So I am going to do this giveaway. We're gonna do three of them. Here we go. Hello, Jimmy. How are you? Hello, Teresa. Yes, a bunch of new viewers today. I love it. Yes, you guys, there are so many different things you can add to these pinwheels. All right, so here we go. My thing is trying to... 
Yes, Linda, good luck, you guys. So the numbers I'm gonna do today are two, four, and six. Just keep it simple. Normally I randomly pick the numbers, um, but today we're just gonna do two, four, and six. So even if you see your name, it doesn't necessarily mean you've won. You do have to be pulled on the numbers two, four, and six. You do have to comment right away that you are here. You only have two minutes to do that um, or you miss out. So our first winner is Paula. Maltier, if you are here, Paula, three and four. Second winner, Sarah Mart. Sarah Mart, if you are here, you have two minutes to comment that you are here. Sarah Mart, five and six. Sasha McDonald, if you are here, please comment that you are here. All right, Paula, I see you. And we do need the other ones to comment or we will pull other names. Sarah is here as well. Congratulations, Sarah, first time winner. And now we're just waiting on Sasha and now she is here. So our three winners are here. Thank you guys for being prompt with your answers. Um, please just message me your first name, last name, shipping information, phone number, and email. You do need all that information. Paula, I do have your information. Just shoot me a quick quick message saying yay or something. And that's just my reminder to place the order. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. You are so sweet. Congratulations to everybody. I will be on tomorrow. I'm making a peppermint pie for my mom. So if you've ever wanted to make a really quick and easy peppermint pie for the holidays or for the heck of it, come on tomorrow. I'm not sure what time yet, but that's what I'm going to be making. And I will post the recipe tonight when I figure out what time tomorrow. Have an awesome evening and I'm going to get working on the rest of these pinwheels. Bye.